Hello, welcome back to Cute It Real with Nick. Here we are at this fabulous Comic Con this year, 2022. And you know what? And also, just let everybody know that next week I'll be starting my uh, my anniversary, my fifth anniversary to, uh, talk show. Um, in addition, so look out for that. And we're here to have fun and taking um, interviews, taking photos. So stay tuned for more. And especially um, Eddie McClintock, uh, who played Pete, he's just like the nicest person you've ever met. He's like just funny and super nice. So he was very welcoming. Um, and the only person that gave me a little bit of like, I'm not sure about this guy, was Saul Rubinek, who plays Artie. Right. I had to earn it a little bit. Like after about two, he was, he was not unkind or anything, but he was just kind of like sizing me up, I felt like, for the first couple episodes. And then we sort of hit our stride and, and and then we were great, we had a blast. But uh, uh, but yeah, it was super, super fun, and I always loved reading the scripts because it was so fun to see what the artifact was gonna be and how it was gonna tie into the storylines, and I, I thought that was such a creative, they did such an amazing job of, of keeping those things interesting and creative and, and fun to fun to watch and fun to read, too. And it must have been like a really fun, you know, process of discovery to, to discover the new thing every, you know, what's it gonna be, and. Totally, and poor Saul had to explain it every time. He got the, the, the long passages. We just got to be like, oh, cool. That sounds really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, it was, you know, slightly educational, I guess. Like, little, there's little tidbits of history. Not that it was all based in reality, but there's always some part of history or some part of reality that was tied into the, to the artifacts. And I thought that was a really cool, um, yeah, way to just keep things interesting. It's a, it sounds like that was like a, a learning to work with Saul and... and but let's go to Killjoys, because there's a, a show with an immense scope and, and again, a lot of discovery. Um, how did that role come about? I was doing a movie, I still remember, you know, something, some things you remember and some things are fuzzy, but I was doing a table read for a movie called Regression. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was this, the casting director who had cast that movie was at the table read, and when we finished, I was just kind of chatting with him, and he said, you know, we've got this new show that were casting called Killjoys, and he's like, I think that you're probably, you know, right for one of the roles. Like, I think it's, right. it'd be a good, good fit for you. And I said, oh, okay, great, like, let, let me know. And it was like a month or two later, I got uh, the audition, and it all just really lined up. It all just worked out. The guy who was directing the pilot uh, was uh, a friend of my wife's from years ago, and I'd met him like many, many times, so I was like, okay, this is good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Michelle Lavretta, who uh, was a writer and creator of the show I'd worked with on Killjoys, or, sorry, on Lost Girl, show called Lost Girl. And so there's all these things that were sort of lined up um, to, to sort of be, for things to work out. And then also I found out when I was testing for the part that uh, one of the other actors said to me, you know, when you do a test, it's like there's like probably three people for each of the roles and you go and you read, they mix and match just to see, are you guys twins? Okay, hi. <laughs> Sorry, I just... Twin is fine, twin. Yeah, 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 it's just a natural... Kind of, yeah, okay, hi guys. Um, I, he feels your pain. Yes, I do. No, I, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Um, and so we were mixing a match, and one of the actors who was auditioning for the same role that I was auditioning for said, Oh, I heard that there's a picture up with your name on it for the for the role, like, in, in the writing writer's room. And I was like, oh, is this guy... Like, I was like... I think he's trying to mess with me. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like in some w weird way. But then I found out later that that was true, that Michelle had worked with me before and then had sort of some of, some aspects of the character, I think, or whatever she was thinking about me when she was writing. So I was like, oh, that's pretty... So I didn't know that it was like a it really, really set up for for uh, for me to, to win the role, but you, know, you just don't know that until after the fact. So it was destined, I think, uh, in, in a way, you know? And that was just such a great experience to also join a show at the very beginning, because most of these other shows that I've had larger roles on, I was jumping in as they were already well, you know, successful and 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 going. So to be get to be part of something from the very beginning uh, was really special. And and you know, you just feel like you're discovering it and you're building it all together, and and you're a big part of that. And that was really, yeah, it was special. And I remember when I interviewed you and and the cast and Hannah and Luke. And you guys had such a natural chemistry together. It was just like we rode in the elevator. You guys were just you're just friends. Well, that, that was, was amazing. That was it. It was like literally going to work with two of uh, my favorite people every day for I don't know. Well, we did five seasons, so it was like this is not work. This is hanging out with your buddies and goofing around. Like it's this really really sweet job. So th that was a special one for me. And yeah, I just I'm so glad that that it happened. And you get to do that same sort of thing again with Lock and Key. You're yeah. like Uncle Dunk. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Another great role that I got to step into. And I was a huge fan of the comic books. Um, somebody, well, I don't know, it was a decade ago or something like that, or maybe around then, somebody said, oh, I think you really, really like this series. Mm -hmm. um, and I started reading it. And I was like, oh, this is really, really great. So when, oh, and, and sorry, there's so many things bouncing through my head. So I, I'd read the comic books, and then I was working on a show called Lost Girl, and one of the cast members, Ksenia, she uh, had done a pilot for Lock and Key, and she played the Dodge role. And I was like, oh my god, like that's so cool, can I see it? So she let me watch it, and it just didn't work like as a pilot, and it didn't get picked up. And, uh, and I was like, oh, that's too bad, like, I really wanted to see that on TV. And then numerous years later, they're casting again and it's shooting in Toronto. And I was like, oh yeah, like if I could get this role, it'd be so great to actually work on something that you're already a fan of the source material. Um, and yeah, it was, it was just, again, one of those things. It's just like, I think when I auditioned for the role, I knew the character really, really well. So, and, and the world, basically. Like the character doesn't have a huge amount to do in the comics, but I just, I understood the world, I understood where this character was coming from, and so I think, you know, being able to do that, you, you know, there, you bring something that maybe some of the other actors that are going on for it don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, that, that was a really, really sweet gig, um, and there's still a third season to come, so that's kind of exciting if you're a fan of that show, because there's, yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to that. <laughs> so, um, before we uh, uh, turn the time over to Ben, um, in your experience, in your career, has there been a fan moment, a fan memory that stands out? Well, I can tell you about one particular moment, and, and but it's about me being a fan. Oh. So, I was, I still remember that I, I, I've met many, many actors and celebrities over the years, and I don't particularly get too excited or too, you know, I mean, I'm just, I'm, it's, Cool to meet people, but I don't get like nervous or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I was at Montreal Comic Con, and uh, all of a sudden, I could see all these people that were sort of on the floor start coming over towards my table. And all of a sudden, there was like 50 people standing, like kind of in front of my table. And I was like, "What is everybody like?" I'm like, "Oh, my line just got really big. This is great. Like, I don't know where what happened." I, and then I sort of. I'm looking and I'm trying to figure out what's going on and I hear this voice from behind me say, Hello, young man. And I said, I was like, what? And it was Patrick Stewart. And I was like, oh, oh, oh hi. Hi, Patrick. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not Sean. You've worked with my brother. And, like, and he was just like, I know. And I was like, oh. and I was like oh. So I know I was like kind of sweating and my heart was beating. And I was like, well, it's just really nice to meet you. I was a big uh, Next Generation fan. I, you know, growing up, I... You know, I was watching it all the time. So uh, it was really cool. And then for the rest of the weekend, I got to sit in the green room. He'd always be like, Aaron, come on, I'm sit to talk. And, and, you know, and we, we just hung out. And it was just like such a great, but I really felt very nervous and like really flustered. And I could barely speak. And um, so I don't know, that was 
you, you, that was sort of like my fan moment where I was like, I, it's, it's kind of really fun to <laughs> meet yeah, people that you really respect. And I feel the same way. Like, yeah. He's, still, he's got such gravitas about him. Totally, but also very laid back and very, you know, just a nice man, you know? Um, and then I'm like, I'm trying to think of like specific things. I, I haven't had any... I haven't had any like really bizarre things or anything like that, but what I do like is like seeing the same people over and over again. Like I've been doing these cons for, I don't know, maybe around 10 years-ish, something like that. And to just bump into the same people and see the same people, it's just kind of nice. It's like, you know, we don't see each other outside of these things, but it's like nice to just kind of bump into people and kind of catch up about whatever they're, you know, whatever they're up to and, and how they've been and stuff. So I, I do enjoy that. I enjoy seeing the same people over and over again because it's like a, no, it's like, it's like a level of appreciation. It is, and it's like a ca it's like a casual friendship, right? When you like see the same people over and over again, and like you're just kind of catching up on things. It's kind of nice. I like it. So let's turn the uh, time over to the audience and see if there are any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Okay, good, go. good. <laughs> it's always the nervous thing. It's like, is anybody going to say anything? It's just going to. Since your brother was an X Men, but now with the multiverse being, and you were given the opportunity, what character would you? Oh my god. <laughs> you couldn't, like, just well, let him have a few minutes. You know what? I mean? <laughs> you know what? They, they don't have a Wolverine right now, right? I, I want to be Wolverine. I know I don't really look like him, but I, in my mind, I, that's who I would want to play. That's like my, it would be like, I, I, growing up, that was my favorite Marvel character. So, in, in another universe where I had like three years to get really big and grow a crazy beard, I, I, I'd do Wolverine. <laughs> there you go. What's your favorite blooper moment at Smallville? My favorite blooper moment? My favorite blooper moment. Uh, I, I, I honestly can't, it was, to be honest with you, that was about 14 years ago, so I don't remember any funny bloopers other than Michael peeing in a jar, which is <laughs> more gross than funny. It still blows me away, so. <laughs> or any other show. Well, again, well, here's another, here's a, uh, have you seen Warehouse 13? Do you know that show? Okay, well, so the uh, the main actor, uh, his name is Eddie McClintock, and he's a real goof. And on the show, there's a, a machine that's called the Bronzer. And some of the bad guys, or some of the things they'll put in the Bronzer, and then they get frozen into like a bronze type thing. So in the show, uh, Eddie, sorry, Pete, the character, is like sort of high on this weird, I don't know, I can't remember what the artifact was, but so he bronzes me. So that's what's happening in the show, and it's like a closed off thing that you go in to get bronzed. But Eddie, the actor, uh, before the take, we're, like it says rolling, and he was standing in the bronzer. And I was like, I don't know what he's doing in there, but he's just standing in there, and it's like, they say rolling, so it's like, oh, I'm like, okay, I have to hop in there, the door closes, and I'm looking at Eddie, and he's just laughing. And I said, what the heck, like, what's so funny? And I'm like, Oh, he farted in there, and then and he knew that the door was going to close over, and I was going to be stuck in there. So you know, there's a lot of little weird things like that that happen. <laughs> he got me really good. He got me really, really good. You in the back there. I actually started acting when I was very young. I think I was like seven or eight years old, I uh, ish, somewhere around then. And my brother and I have a twin brother, and uh, my mom was part of a something called a twin or triplet club, which sounds bizarre, but it's basically like, you know, <laughs> for parents who have like lots of kids all at once, it's like it was like a social thing for them to do, whatever. And a, a local, uh, this was in, in Alberta, uh, I grew up in Alberta, and a local TV station came to the Twin and Triplets Club and said, is there any kids that might be, you know, interested in auditioning for commercials? And my mom asked us as little kids, like, hey, do you guys want to go try out to do a toy commercial? You're seven years old, you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to do that. So we auditioned for the part, and I actually, I actually got the role, but the day that we were um, supposed to shoot it, I, I was throwing up, I had like the flu or something like that, and my mom was like, I don't, I don't know what to do, so she called the company and was like, Aaron's really, really sick, but you saw Sean too, and they look really similar, can he come in? And, and they said, yeah, 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 that's totally fine. 
So I say that I, I, I like to joke that I started my brother's career because if I hadn't booked that commercial, who knows where he would be right now. Um, but then we just started continuing to do commercials and we moved to Ontario where there was more filming going on and we just started doing like little bits, you know, a couple lines and something here and there, like very small parts. And then, so for me, I didn't even think that I was going to do it as a career even when I finished high school. I was applying to go to school and one year I, I got accepted to go to university but then I booked a couple jobs, some acting jobs that were going to take me into the fall. And I was like, the money that I'm going to make, I could like pay my tuition for a couple years, so it's like maybe I should just do these jobs. And the, the school said, that's fine, you can you know defer till next year and, and come next year. And then I just started working and acting, and I thought, oh, maybe why would I go to school when I'm actually just already working? So for me, I sort of fell into it. Uh, I started when I was young, and, and again, it wasn't something where I was like, I'm going to be an actor. I just really enjoyed doing it, and but then sort of by the time I was like 19 or 20, I had been like, well, let me try and do this as a career. And so far, so good. At 42, I'm still doing it, so it's, yeah. <laughs> Is that a question right there? Mm -hmm. sure. um, have you and your brother played together? Uh, yes, a couple times. We did some commercials when we were little together. Uh, my brother did a show called Animorphs, which was like a, based on, um, uh, some uh, book series that was, I think it was on Nickelodeon and back then the, they didn't quite have the technology that was so easy to do like green screen and, and doubling in that so at one in one episode uh, it, this Sean's character had to walk into somebody I can't remember the circumstances but there was a double of him and it was like they had to walk into each other and they're like well we either have to pay tons of money to do this green screen thing that we're not sure if it's gonna look very good or Aaron, do you want to come in and have a day's work? And I was like, yeah, for sure. So we, we worked together then. We also did an episode of a show called Fringe together where we played twins. It was actually really awesome. Uh, great to, yeah, it was a great show. I hadn't seen it when I did the, the show. So then afterwards, well, my wife and I got, really got into the show and I was like, honey, I'm in one of these episodes. Like when we get to season three or whatever, I'm in the show. <laughs> So that was kind of exciting, uh, kind of fun, and we have sort of, I'm trying to think, there's a couple other little things that we've done together, I think, over the years. I'm trying to remember, oh gosh, what else? Oh, and, and Warehouse 13, we actually didn't work together, but there's another episode where my character got split into two, two versions of himself. And originally, they were like, it'd be great if we could get Sean to come up and play one version, and you would play the other version, but he was working on something at the time. Um, or or he, would, he would have had to shave his head or something, because I had a shaved head, and he's like, I can't, I'm supposed to go do this other project, and I can't do it, so I ended up playing both characters. Um, but, so there's always things that, over the years, there's, there's stuff that we've worked together, and we're, we're looking for a project, hopefully like a movie or something, that we could do together, but most of the time, it's sort of like Freaky Friday switcheroo stuff that's like a little bit like, yeah, yeah, that's kind of obvious for twins to do that stuff. So we're looking for something that might be a little bit more serious or a little bit more uh, an interesting take on it. But um, yeah, so if any of you guys are writers, <laughs> you know, just, just an idea. Oh, there's one right there. Um, if you could have any of the Walking Dead Ooh, nice. Um, mm. Probably the head key. I just think it's like, yeah. Although going into other people's heads maybe, you know, seems like fun, but maybe it would be terrifying. And you're like, oh, I shouldn't know that about this person. It makes me not like them or whatever. But uh, I think it would, that I, to me, that's the most interesting key. Uh, but there's so many. I mean, the anywhere key would be great too, because I'm lazy. I don't want to have to walk everywhere. And, you know, just being able to like, like after the convention, I'm like, I'm just gonna walk through that door and be in my bedroom. That'd be pretty sweet. So I, that'd probably be my second, uh, my second choice. What about you? What key would you like? Yeah. There you, hey, perfect. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. I'm talking about like just going home, and you're like, no, no, no. I'm gonna want to go to Paris, not uh, not home. Yeah. This one. We 
working with Darby was amazing. She is a great actor and just like a very, very nice person. Down to earth, just, just really easy to be around. So we had, and we had lots of scenes, especially in the first season. We had, well, pretty much all my stuff in the first season was with her. So I got to know her quite well and, and uh, yeah, we got along great. Uh, and my wife is a big fan of Scandal too, so she was pretty excited when, when uh, uh, I got to work with Darby. Um, and then, as far as season three, I am in season three, but it's not quite as prominent of a role. Um, but I've got, there's definitely one or two episodes where I've got some really fun stuff, so, uh, yeah. So stay tuned. Maybe October, I don't know. There you go. Of Killjoys? Yeah, um, hmm. I think my favorite episode was the last episode of season two. Um, there was, uh, uh, I guess you can't really spoil something that's like five years old. If, nobody's seen it. if you haven't seen, or, or you won't remember this when you watch it. So, um, uh, Delsea uh, had, had murdered Potter, my, my lovely Potter. Your hair reminds me sort of, she had like nice red hair. <laughs> uh, and then I sort of get revenge on her, and it's like I kind of, I, I don't know, there was just something about that storyline and, and, and those scenes that I just really, really enjoyed how they turned out. Um, that being said, I also really enjoyed, I think it was the beginning of season four, uh, Johnny got sort of Hullen, he turned into like a bad guy, and there was some like great, I really enjoyed playing a bad guy and getting to be kind of a jerk. Um, that's always a good time. Uh, so yeah, th probably those sort of things, uh, that stuff with Potter and when she was uh, murdered and, and then also when I get to play, play the bad guy was pretty, was a highlight too. I always liked your moments with Lucy. Well, oh, my sweet Lucy, yes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I wasn't sure what a, when they were sort of like, at the beginning I think it was just the, the ship was, was the ship and, and the personality grew, uh, I think the idea of them, of Lucy sort of falling in love with John was something that kind of developed, but I thought that was awesome. Like, what a great, you know, a man and his ship, or a ship and his man, Yeah. you know? And they loved each other. Maybe, maybe Lucy loved him a little bit more than he loved her, but still, yes, there was, there was a lot of love there. That's your homework, folks. Go home, watch the episode, and see <laughs> if Lucy loved John. John loved Lucy. <laughs> I think somebody made me an I Love Lucy t-shirt once, and I was Aww. like, yeah, it was really cute. <laughs> See, there's a fan moment, right? Yeah, 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 yeah there you go, that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yep, hi. Hi. Hi, <laughs> hi. there you are. Nice to meet you. Uh, so my question is, uh, have you ever been attached to a character so much that, you know, your real life character has been altered? Uh, to be honest with you, yes, I feel like um, and I don't know why, it's not like intentionally, like, you know, you do things, but when I did Smallville, uh, and I was playing Jimmy Olsen, I lived in Vancouver, and I have family there, but I was working a ton, so I didn't, I didn't have any, like, friends there, so I was basically, like, working, and then going home, and I, and so, my life really became work. And so I sort of, when, when, the, when I was finished doing three, and, and also that was a, a show where we did 22 episode seasons, so I wasn't in all the episodes, but it's basically like 10 months of the year you're shooting and then they take two months off. So I did that for three years in a row, playing Jimmy Olsen for 10 months, two months off, 10 months, two months off, 10 months, two months off. Sorry to make you do that three times, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, and. So when I finished that role, I didn't realize that I was in such a Jimmy Olsen mode, but I really, it was like hard to step away from that role. I just felt like I wasn't myself a little bit when I finished it, and I had to go back to you know, my normal life and, and not living by myself and, and actually coming back to Toronto. So that's the one time that I got a little bit into the role a little bit, not in a weird way where I was like, you have to call me Jimmy Olsen, you know, on set all at all times and all this kind of stuff, but just I really had sort of taken on taken on the role a little bit. Right Absolutely. Well, I think I, I, I love the idea of being able to go back as like a, you know, older version of, of Jimmy Olsen. Like, 
maybe Jimmy has a family, maybe he has, you know, like all these things that would be really cool. He's, maybe he's not just working as a, you know, a cub photographer, but maybe he's, you know, running the department. You know, I don't know. Like, it, it could be really, really cool to see where Jimmy Olsen's character, as he actually grows up, ends up. And maybe there are comic books where that's, you know, I, I know that they, he had his own comic book, so who knows what weird things, but I, I think it would be fun. Uh, even if it was brief, to just like pop in and see that. I, I, I think obviously people like to see those things tied together or come back and, you know, even if it's just a little, a little blip, I think it adds to, to the scope of these universes. So yeah, I, I, if, if they asked me, I would be there in a second. I think this gentleman had a question earlier. Not to harp on the brother thing again. No, it's okay, that's, that's... But I'm wondering if there was a role that Sean did that you really wanted, and, and vice versa. <laughs> Have you done something that Sean said, I hate my twin brother? <laughs> he did this thing, uh, kind of a little thing. You guys might have uh, might have seen it though, called um, the X Men movies. <laughs> now I don't know where the hell I was when he auditioned for that because I don't I don't I didn't audition for that. So I'm always like I, I'm trying I'm like where was I that I didn't audition for that? So that I mean obviously that was a career making role and especially at that time period when there wasn't a ton of comic book movies that was. Huge! Like I remember going to see that in the theaters and just being like, "Holy shit, Sean, you're a superhero!" Sorry about that. But you know what I mean? It was that type of thing where I was like, "Wow, this is so wild." So obviously, that's the thing that I, I, I you know, would have been great. Also, I really liked. Um, my brother worked on a show called The Following, which I thought was really cool. It didn't. It, it, it was one of those shows that, like, I, I, I don't think it got the the traction that it could have could have gotten but I thought it was really good and I loved his role and I loved what he did in that uh, role so I would I would say that as well I think would have been a role that I would have liked to play and as far as Sean being jealous or envious of something that I've done I don't know you'd have to talk to him he hasn't mentioned it um, <laughs> we know there's a lot right exactly <laughs> he wouldn't no no no, no. Oh, right there um Warehouse 13 question, huge fan. When they killed Jinx in that season, did they actually have it planned out the way they were going to revive him, or was it sort of just... I don't know. Um, I signed on to the show as just a reoccurring for like, I don't know, eight episodes or ten episodes or whatever it was, so that was my contract. So when they were killing me at the end, I knew, I wasn't like, oh, I did a bad job, they're killing me. I knew that it was for a limited amount of time. Um, and when we were filming that episode, the uh, Jack Kenny, who is the showrunner, said, oh, we're bringing you back next season. Don't worry about it. Like, I've got a great idea. We're going to bring you back. And, and in my mind, I was like, okay, you don't have to, you know, I'm just like, yeah, I get it. It's the, it's the end of my contract. You and Claudia, the way it worked in the next season, was fantastic. That's what I was wondering. Yeah, well, so I think at a certain point, they were probably thinking, oh, this character's working out, but we've already planned that there's going to be this big dramatic end. But you know, we can bring him back. So I think before we'd finished shooting that third season, they knew that they were gonna bring me back. I didn't know that, but the writers obviously uh, were, were thinking of some cool ideas to bring back. I still have the metronome too. I took that home as my souvenir. They, they, they were like, you know, you can take home an artifact or whatever. I was like, well, I'll take the metronome. So I still have that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the questions we had. What, what, what items do, do actors take from their shows? Whatever Take they'll, anything else whatever from, they'll let me. From, kill, uh, from uh, Warehouse Routine, that was the thing that I took. They were kind of like, I, I probably could have gotten some other things. I also really liked, there was like mini Tesla guns, which I also really, really liked, but um, they were also auctioning a lot of that stuff off for charity and stuff. So I was I was like, I just want to keep my one. I, would, you know, I don't need more than that. Uh, for Killjoys, I still have my full like leather jacket, holster, That's gun, thought, yeah. all that stuff. Uh, and I, I joke with my, my wife that I'm like, in like 10 years, I'm gonna put it on, I'm like, oh, like, you know, barely squeezing into it, like, do I still look like a skate, space cowboy? And she's like, you look like some sort of space cowboy, but not, uh, not the space cowboy from 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, so I, I uh, yeah, and 
I, I try and take a little something. The one thing that I collect from every set uh, that I have a bigger role on is they have the director's chairs where they have the chair back, and usually they have your name or the production's name or the character's name or something on it. So I collect those because that's a really easy thing that nobody's gonna right. after the show's yeah. done. Nobody wants that, but. I kind of like them because it's just an easy thing for me to collect and store, and and uh, it's just good for to look back. And Kurt Russell did the exact same thing from Escape from New York. Yeah. And then when we did Escape from New uh, from LA, he had the same outfit and he could still fit into it. I'm sure you still. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could. <laughs> right now I could, but maybe in a few more years, it's tucked away in a box. I, um, and yeah, it's just really cool. Like they custom make the jackets, they custom made the harnesses and the weapons and stuff. So it's like you know, they're, they're, a lot of time and effort goes into them. And and you know, pretty much every day I wore that. It was like a side thing, like the gun. You're constantly, you kind of get to know it. You kind of have form a relationship with your props. And uh, yeah, it's kind of fun to to keep them. I think there was a question right here. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you can tell us about season three, the Falcon? No. <laughs> um, it's going to be good. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's going to be really fun. I, 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 on, on two levels, I don't like spoiling things for people, and neither does the production. It's mostly the production that I'm I'm worried about. Netflix is a big company. If I start <laughs> blabbing about everything, they're like, "Well, enjoy your not working for us anymore." Uh, I will say that, yes, it's fun. Well, you know what, I can tell you one thing, it's not a huge spoiler, but um, Uncle Dunk uh, gets married. So there's a really fun wedding episode where he marries Brian. His, uh, and we, you meet Brian very, uh, at the beginning of season two, just a little bit, like he's off to Tokyo and, and um, to work, and that's why Uncle Duncan is sort of living at the house, because he's just like, well, I got nowhere else to live. Uh, so there's a really fun wedding episode uh, where we get to see Uncle Doug get married. So I'll say I'll say that I'll say that much. It's not really a spoiler, but it's kind of something that's fun. Yeah. I think we've got time for one more question. But nobody's got one. one. <laughs> it's a good thing that we've only got time for one more question because yeah. we are all out of questions. Oh, and there you go. Thank you for saving me and getting rid of this awkward moment. <laughs> That would be nice, wouldn't it? He's the busiest man in Hollywood. <laughs> Not in auditions because usually, you know, they sort of can see who's coming in and they booked people. But how many times today has somebody can like? We actually started this fun. Uh, I was in London, Ontario, and uh, the person that was helping me at my table. Uh, we sort of started this fun game where every time somebody comes up and thinks that I'm Sean, we mark it on the table, because there's usually these plastic tablecloths, so we mark it down, and at the end of the con, I take a picture, and then I send it to Sean, and then when he does conventions, he does the same thing. He'll, like, just, you know, mark how many people think that it's him, and then we just sort of send it to each other, and it's, um, it's just a fun little game. Because it happens all the time. Constantly. Constantly, constantly. Um, there's a lot of people who know your work specifically, and then there's pe people who are like more casual fans of your work who see the thing, but they're not necessarily, so that's usually where people are kind of like, oh, I thought you were the same person. Like, all the time on Twitter, people are like, you know, the, the mind is blown emoji, where they're like, there's two of them? And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, there's two of them, yeah, yeah, there's, so, yeah, it happens constantly. This one's the new and improved model. Yes, <laughs> yeah, 2.0. <laughs> Well, Aaron, I gotta say, thank you so very much for showing up and, and sharing your time with us. Uh, I know I've enjoyed it, and I've almost damaged my phone, but <laughs> <laughs> thanks again. And ladies and gentlemen, please give it up, Aaron Ashford. Not Sean. Not Sean. Thanks, guys. Thank you for the great questions, and thanks for uh, listening. Yeah, I have to say it.